Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. When I, uh, I lived in Mexico for about three years. My dad had taken a trip. One of the things that happened every year was a pilgrimage. And the pilgrimage would actually start in Mexico City and would make its way across Mexico to San Juan de los Lagos, where the Virgin had appeared and healed an injured circus performer. And then uh, she would make her way, they would process this giant statue of the Virgin, and then she would make her way uh, to San Antonio. Uh, and then she would be returned on an airplane. That, uh, now that works is a different sermon, probably. That's not what I'm here about. But as we walked, my dad and I decided we would walk the pilgrimage with folks. And so you would walk about 20 to 30 miles a day, and uh, you would camp out, and we would we, we kind of joined up from our little town and went all the way to San Juan de los Lagos. And about three days in was the day we climbed Mount Cubalete. And Mount Cubalete uh, is one of the tallest uh, mountains in that region of central Mexico. And I did not know what to expect, but we made our way out of camp. uh, And through the early morning, it was pitch black, and you would kind of have a a, a lantern that you would carry with you, and you'd make your way, and you'd stop every once in a while. People would sell you a tea or some cinnamon tea or something like that, kind of keep your energy up. And then uh, as we came out of the pastures that morning, uh, there was this massive cloud bank that had settled in over the valley. And so you couldn't see Mount Kublai at all. So uh, we kind of meandered our way. Kind of an amazing thing even just to watch this, this lit procession all the way up to the top. So we kind of followed in. And as we came above the cloud line, there, in all its majesty, was a giant statue of Jesus. I mean, huge. And so always when we read this transfiguration story, it touches me in a way because of that sense of overwhelming glory, majesty, power, vision, that one that I experienced as I came above that what they were experiencing. Now, we could talk about a lot of other things, but here I just want to uh, simply begin with a very easy way of approaching uh, this gospel. It is very clear to us that uh, Jesus, we're to see Jesus as part of a great lineage, right? So we read the story of Exodus that we are seeing Jesus as God and great just like in that Exodus story, uh, that we are in the place of Moses, right? In the Exodus story, we're in the place of Peter uh, as they are on the mountaintop with Jesus, right? So we are, we are having an uh, experience of this God and Jesus in this moment. And so you hear them trying to figure out, well, what does this mean? And who's that with them? And it's just a powerful Piece of the glorification of God in the person of Jesus. It's, and it's, a, it's just a powerful moment. And so, of course, when, if you've ever had a spiritual experience of great power, and not everybody has, nor should everybody, but some people do, well, what we would know or might be told to us is that, that they, they have a great sense of worship in that moment. That, that they have a sense of this kind of awe inspiring God who is fully beyond anything we can know. And I think that's what they have here. And so it's no wonder that they say, oh, let's build little booths to worship. It would be so nice. 
here on the mountaintop is a beautiful place. Let's build it. People will come here to worship. But we're told, and it's not that that's a bad thing, it's just that we're told that Jesus has a bigger thing in mind. And so Jesus then immediately, when this is over, leads them down. If we were over our Bible and read the rest of the passage, Jesus leads them down into the town where he does healings and continues to change the way people are living in community. So there is this powerful kind of juxtaposition, if you will, this kind of two ends of Jesus' ministry. One, which is certainly his ministry of showing us God's love and power and glory in the world, but there's also this transformation that is happening in the world because Jesus is present with the disciples. You all, I think that is exactly what we as Episcopalians believe we're doing. That what we do is we come every Sunday to worship God. I mean, we might come on certain days because we've had a really terrible week, right? And, or maybe we need to pray for somebody who needs healing. Like, we can come into this room for a lot of different reasons. But the primary reason we're here is to worship and glorify a God beyond our own. It is to say, you are not a God I make. You're not a God I imagine. I come before you, I worship you, I offer you thanksgiving for your death and resurrection, for me, for your grace and mercy and love that you pour down on the world. It's why we sing hymns, it's why we process, it's why we uh, read the lessons to retell the story of God's love and freedom that he offers people. So we rehearse the great things that God has done. This is a sort of weekly transfer, uh, transfiguration moment, a time where we're to come here. And I'll tell you, anytime anything else takes place for that, we aren't doing church particularly well. There's a lot of things we can bring in here from outside. But the truth is, when we come in here, it doesn't matter who you are, we are loved by God and we are to worship God and begin our week this way. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I confirmed a young woman, she wrote me a letter about her confirmation said one of the reasons she really uh, loved confirmation was she discovered that her weeks were better when she started them in prayer and worship of God on Sunday. She was 15. So just to say, she, she got something I mean, sometimes I forget, <laughs> is that we're here to, to worship God, and then we go out, right? We go down the mountain. We go back to our lives, back into our workplaces, back our friendship circles, back to school, back to wherever we go, and we're to live a different life. We're to make a difference. Now, you may say, well, what kind of, what am I supposed to do? Well, the good news is it's all in your pamphlet today, because from baptism to confirmation, we're going to talk about how Episcopalians believe they're to live with other people. But at the center of it is love and dignity for others, regardless of whether we agree with them or not. It's just flat out to be, uh, to be an image, an, an icon of God in the world. We take the transfiguration with us, if you will, into our daily lives. Now, we know we can't do that always perfect. Uh, I don't know about you, but some days I don't even make it about eight hours, you know, before the world kind of pulls at me and tells you know, that, Next thing you know, I'm a hypocrite just like everybody else, right? But uh, for Episcopalians, we believe that that's not the end of the story, that God continues to love us no matter what we do and to want to have us be close. And so what our, our act is then to repent and return to the Lord, right? So we come back. We come back to the mountain before we go back. This is an amazing opportunity today. We've got Phoenix's baptism. We've got confirmations. And I have an opportunity to actually proclaim and see that the world is being made new. No matter what you thought is going on out there, today we proclaim God's love, God's power, God's welcoming spirit. And we do that through baptism and confirmation. And then we all go to the table. <coughs> where nobody can divide us. And we sit and we ask for one more thing. We put our hands out and ask God to feed us.
just like in the Lord's Prayer, give us our daily bread. And God gives it to us, and we are sent into the world. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.